Meet my new friend. He hasn't got a name. I'm just parked in Holland. I think he's a moorhen. But in Holland they have lots of dikes, as everybody surely knows, running around and um, you have lots of wild fa wildfowl. Um, you also have lots and lots of mosquitoes in Holland and they love me. I taste gorgeous apparently. So I sit there with the windows wind up and the aircon going while this stunning moorhen goes and eats them all. <laughs> that does me nicely. I definitely like him. So this is another part of Holland that we always see is the industrial areas. I'm going around now to load fruit for Madrid market. Everything is on top of itself. Um, as you can see, another dike. They run, the dikes run everywhere in Holland and they're used an awful lot. Um, Holland is very flat, so um, it, the, the water doesn't move much so that's why it gets a lot of mosquitoes and um, the industrial estates are always organized they're always together um, they have little maps at them when you go to them so they're pretty easy to find places in holland but very busy very industrial i'm sure there's nicer places and as you get out of the cities it, they're always um they always look pretty but most of the time this is all we see actually you've been here before with me um, it's, it's one of our places that we load regular at it, um, it, it's got two or three different places so you have to go here to get the details of where you load in this is like where they have the main information so you, you're all, your address is always here and then you go into the office and they'll tell you which cold store you're loading out of So when you come in into here, it, there is a big sign that says do not back on a bay. That's because you may not be loading in this one, you may be going to another cold store. They're usually born on the same estate, um, but once you go into this place, there's a girl in there, you give her your reference and where you're going to and all that sort of thing, and she'll tell you where you're going. Nice enough place, nice enough people. So as it is, I'm loading here. So I went round the block again and come back. Now is it me? I know we all have to learn, but there's two drivers in this lorry and he's been trying to get on this bay for at least 10 minutes. His left hooker should be able to get on, not doing it very well, but the guy, his mate, is still sat in the seat. Like, there's some glue on it. And you just think, give the bloke a hand. Just, you know, show him back, whatever. But I can't get onto my bay because I want the one that's nearest to me here until they're on a bay, um, which is frustrating because I have to take a bigger swing because I'm the wrong side so that I can see what I'm doing. But it just I don't get that they're not helping. 
I was so tempted to get out and, and give him a hand, but then this guy's got out. But I can't make up my mind whether he's the driver or if he's the helper. He's coming from the driving side, so I think the helper is still sat in the cab. But beyond me, how they can do that, and we see it all the time, and you just think, get off your backside and give the guy a hand. Pass an awful lot of water in Holland, over it, under it, pass it. Um, if I remember correctly, the Hook of Holland is one of the major or the biggest container ports in Europe. The fruit that we collect has come into these ports in containers from Africa, America, and then they take it into the cold stores and we um, they quality control it and then we collect it from there. You can see from this view what I mean about the dams, they run everywhere in Holland. That's how they water everything, that's how they grow everything. They're everywhere, also the mosquitoes are too. Anybody that's driven in Holland gets that, ha, <laughs> gonna bang my head. Every time they go down through their tunnels, their tunnels are very low and quite often very long, but they're all just you have to be under four meters to get under four meters and under to get them through their tunnels but there is something about them that makes them look shorter lower than every other tunnel that you're going to no idea why but there is something that does is it with foreigners? They always put the water in the cup before the tea bag. It's a very nice packaging though. Not quite Yorkshire or PG but it's a very, it looks very nice. Just doesn't quite taste the same. Quite shocking. Quite shocking to see people living like this in the 21st century in a modern city like Paris. Hi folks, how's things? I know, we're getting there with the hair, but it's getting healthier, but it'd be better when it grows. I've no idea what it's doing. i be able to do something with it, cover me grey bits up and all that, but I'll apologise now. Um, I'm in Valencia, waiting to load my ice cream. I'm having a bit of a day today. Don't ask. Don't know what's going on, but then I've got a cob on. So just this video is just kind of give you an idea what you see from the cab. Nothing very interesting, lots of road. We tend to stay on the outskirts of cities because that's where the industrial areas are. And we don't really want to take a, a lorry this size into a city because it's not the best thing to do. It's not our favorite things. The general public don't want us there. We don't want to be there. So just down through Holland, like I said, very much industrial. We do see some nice sites, but we don't very often get to visit them. So if we get to go to the seaside or we get to go to a nice city and have a look around, it's um, a bonus. And the little bit at the end though, with the guy in the tent, the ramshackly tent, that guy is living on a roundabout. So when you go down through, when you go to Paris, you will see as a visitor, some really nice places and the Eiffel Tower, all that. But that guy is living on a roundabout on the out, on the Parafreak, which is a peripheral, which is the ring road around Paris. 
and when you go around there you will see hundreds if not thousands of these people living in shanty towns they are living underneath bridges they're living on the intersections of roads and the grass bits they are they have got between the motorway and sort of up the embankment they've got hundreds of people living they've got these um, tents uh, ramshackle buildings now they've got electric so whether they've got um, a generator or whether they've tapped into the electric somehow I don't know they've got walkways to stop them getting all muddy but there's hundreds and hundreds of them and you just realize when you see that side of a city that this still goes on as far as I'm aware we don't have that sort of thing in the UK we have very poor people we have people living in squalor we have um, people living on the streets and we have beggars but we don't have these shanty towns that go on for miles and miles and miles as far as i'm away if, if we have i've never seen them and it makes you wonder how this can happen in the 21st century saying that um at least they're alive so i shall let you watch it and a bit of peace and quiet from me rambling on so if you press the like button or the dislike button whichever um and subscribe and press the bell thing which is there I think somewhere then you'll get a notification as to when I'm gonna ramble at you again <laughs> so have a nice day and I shall catch you next time see you later